what's up YouTube this is Kokoda TCG back with another video long story short I wanted to save up for Aqua Force because I know it's a strong clan but Pale Moon got me Lucere got me and here I am lost a lot of money lost a lot of resources but I pretty much built Pale Moon from scratch on this set so today I wanted to talk about this clan because it turns out I actually really like Pale Moon and I'm really thinking of making this my new main so for my starter, I am playing Smiling Presenter, and this is really good because Selective Soul Charging is absolutely busted. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It just really allows you to set up those plays with Purple Trapezes and Dreamy Fortress, which is really important for your mid to late game as a Pale Moon player. So that's why I'm playing this starter. I'm playing 9 Draw because this is a combo based deck and you really need to draw those important pieces. So not every game is going to be your best game. So making sure that you have that 9 draw really helps. In the grade 1s, I play 3 purple trapezes because that is all I have. I am crafting the 4th currently, but until I get that, I have 3. And then the other important grade 1s here is I'm playing 3 fire juggler because it really allows me to re rebuild columns for multi-attack plays in the battle phase. And then, of course, my 2 soul chargers. I talk to other pale moon players and we found that 4 to 6 is a pretty good sweet spot because once you get outside of that you either don't have enough or you're soul charging all your PGs and your triggers at that point so it's a nice sweet spot 4 to 5 or 4 to 6 and then my final grade 1 is Magician of Quantum Mechanics and he's just nice I don't have the 4th look here and he's a very stable way to set up a combo in the case that I don't have a purple trapezus or a look here to set up the combos that I want to set up in the grade twos, I'm playing three of the grade two soul charger and nitro juggler just to round out that five. You don't want to play too many. I'm playing two jumping Jill because it combos really well with Alice and can become a 12k and an intercept when you're attacking. So overall, it's defensive, it hits good numbers, all the good stuff. I'm playing four dreamy fortress and then I'm playing four of the dancing princess of the night sky. And both of these cards are very important to this pale moon build. Uh, Dancing Princess allowing you to soul charge those Dreamy Fortresses, Selective Soul Charging is absolutely busted, and Dreamy Fortress really helping you bridge the gap against a lot of what would be considered really hard matchups prior, like OTT and Narukami. In the Grade Threes, I play for Alice because it's consistent, I play for Lucira because it's consistent, and then on my heel, I have Midnight Invader just because if I draw into it, I have a 12k attacker on Vanguard and it functions very well with my backup ride, Sword Magician Sarah, which is just in case I don't draw the Lucir, she's going to allow me to call things from the soul and put that grade 3 back, so if I have a more Kawa hand, I can still play the game when I ride Magician, Sword Magician Sarah. Overall, this is my Pale Moonless. I really like this clan, and like I said, coming from OTT to this, I've just, I've kind of fallen in love again with Vanguard as of recently, so let's get to some games. All right, here we are looking for games with a pale moon. Really excited to show off Luke here today. I just love how defensive and how aggressive this deck can be at the same time. And it looks like we're going up against Neo Nectar. Definitely been seeing a lot of Neo Nectar hype as of recent, and it's really nice to see the meta diversity. I've been able to see these past few weeks. It's been really refreshing and really makes me want to play more Vanguard Zero. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep the rest. Okay, so I do get a grade 3, just not the grade 3 I was looking for, but that is totally okay. Okay, so I do get a Pharah, so if I completely miss Luke here, I should be able to play the game. And so, if I can get those Dreamy Fortress in as fast as possible, that'd be nice. Neonector doesn't have retire, so I'm gonna hold it a turn. So if I wanna push more damage, I can do so. Okay, it looks like we're fighting against Musketeers. Cecilia is in a I just love the art in Cecilia. A little fun fact for my viewers that about a year and a half ago, I really wanted to get in the Vanguard. I learned how to play Vanguard, at least standard, then using Shadow Paladins and Tachi Kaze. And I kind of, I've loved the game ever since, but I've never really gotten a chance to play it. 
but I was actually the deck I wanted to play was Neo Nectar. So it's really nice that I get to see all the Neo Nectar love in Vanguard Zero here. I'm gonna go ahead and Soul Charge. I miss my Luke here. It hurts just a little bit. And I think I'm gonna try to push it to damage to see if I can kind of just out aggro them here early game. Ooh, so they're gonna they're gonna go ahead and get a heal here. Let's see if I'm equally lucky with my trigger luck. Probably not. I am not. All right. So just gonna go ahead and go to my opponent. It looks like I will most likely be riding Sarah this game. Still not terrible, but it could be better. Beggars aren't choosers. It's a very interesting play here. I, I don't know if I would have did that so early, but again, I am not the Neo Nectar expert, so they must have some masterful plan here. I just don't feel like it was really smart to get rid of their rear guard here. There's a lot of other better targets. I'm gonna go ahead and lose a chill here. I do have enough counter blast for my nightmare doll Alice here. And I do hit the purple trapezes, which is extremely nice here. So there's quite a bit I can do. I'm gonna go ahead and play the Sarah on Vanguard. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Let's see if I can get something good out of this. I do. I think I want the fire juggler. Just actually, I should probably get this in there. Yeah, I should get this in there. I'm gonna go ahead and get the second dreamy in the soul. I know I definitely want to set up for one Alice play. One of those. And as for the rust, I don't know if I really want to use this purple trapezes this turn. I feel like it's a little bit of an over-commitment, but I think I'll just leave it like this. Here's what I'll do. Go ahead and just play this other Atlas. This is going to be... If they uh, draw into a, a really good hand here, it's going to feel awkward. But the hope is that I can better set up using this. Put this soul charger here. Yep. I get another Alice in there, which is kind of funny. Alright. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna attack with Alice first. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get this out. I think. Yeah. I don't get the counter blast, but it is an intercept, so it's still really strong. And then I get to swing again with this column. A little unconventional, but as long as I hit draw triggers or something here, it should be fine. And I am able to push them to four. <laughs> no triggers, though. I'm already through five of my draw triggers. It's the, uh, it's what comes with playing a combo deck, is just sometimes the pieces just don't come to you. But that's why we play 9 draw, so that most of our games don't end up like this. Alright. Now I'm going to go ahead and go for Cecilia here. So they did miss their they did miss their ride, which is extremely 
positive for me here. I'll be able to push more damage, but that probably means I have a ton of PGs. You hate to see it, but it does happen sometimes. It's not going to give me any counter blast at all. My opponent really giving me the short end of the stick here. I do get a soul charger, though. So I'll be able to help, hopefully have a little bit of fun this turn, finally. I get a purple trapezius in the soul. That is a very ideal soul charge. So I'm going to go ahead and try to take game this turn. They don't have the PG. They don't have the PG. They hit the draw trigger, but I do hit over that defensive into their PG. Wow, whiffed heal. You, you hate to see it. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on here. And no draw triggers in sight. Yep, and there goes their PG here. So they definitely have a lot of uh, a lot of counter blasts to play with. Definitely unfortunate that I, I joined to a lot of oh, my draw triggers like that early. And you can kind of see it's just hurting now. Especially that Alice Soul Charge that I did earlier is also starting to... Starting to hurt a little bit. <laughs> Definitely not my brightest moment. pretty optimal if you uh, ask me. I'm curious to see if they, they do have more to play here. So I have a full board. I'm definitely going to feel this one. And we already know that they, I believe they they might stay. I think people are playing stands in this deck. I'm not quite sure. No trigger though, so not nothing I'm really going to have to worry about. I get the draw trigger. Get the draw trigger here. A little bit of luck sacking goes a long way. And see if I can get anything else off the top here to help. I get the Dreamy Fortress. So... The soul's not looking too good for me right now. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play the mechanic. And activate the skill. And then I'm gonna go ahead and play. I think I'm just gonna play a Lukir from the soul here, like this. Because I can always put it back for something else if I get a trigger here. And then I'm just gonna have to go for the Dreamy right now, just to keep myself protected. Um, then let's go for some damage here. That double intercept definitely coming in the clutch for my opponent, but I cannot back down. Not yet. I'm going to go ahead and uh, swing with Vanguard here. I'm just going to go ahead and boost. Let's see if I am lucky. I am very lucky here, so I'm going to get some triggers. <laughs> my opponent kind of in awe here. I'm going to put that there. Put this in, and I'm going to take a loop here out. You'll love to see it. I do not get a second trigger, but that first trigger is pretty much all I needed. Unfortunate to see the heal here, but it's still working out in my favor. And do they have the third PG? Come on! Well, it was good while it lasted. The nice thing is they won't be able to kill me this turn, so I do get another chance to push damage next turn, so this turn, there's always that one turn in the game when playing, if you're playing this deck where you just watch your opponent just smack into Dreamy Fortresses for a whole turn, so this is that turn. I'm going to go for double Cecilia here on the rear guard columns. going to get a grade 2 out of it, so very, very strong setup. Just going to be able to completely clean the board and go for more. 
Do they get a second? Wow. So a very good turn for my opponent here. Just gonna go ahead and push into those dreamies. And uh, this is defense at its finest. And that third dream is gonna come to clutch and kinda make a little a nice little no-no square for me. Alright, and it's time to clean up shop hopefully. It'd be crazy if they had the fourth PG. That would be absolutely crazy. I'm going to ride skip here. And I'm just going to play this. Just so I have the intercept, because I don't have many great defensive options right now so you gotta work with what you got and let's go for it okay. i have exactly four more triggers in my 15 card deck so let's see if i am really that lucky one Let's go. A heal trigger is going to allow me to reset up these columns. You'll love to see it. You really do. I'm going to be able to put this back in the soul and call it back out again. So even if they have the last PG, they do not have the last PG. Is this a heal? Let's go. Okay, so I was able to take the game against Neo Neck. Perfect! Perfect.